Hey, my name is Dan Reeses, and right now I am pretending to be happy because I want to remind everyone that human beings who go on YouTube and do some form of whatever, they're acting. They're advanced acting, and that's what I tried to show in some of my earlier videos. But me, inside, I am very much upset, crying, and all these things. But I just got the plaza back, so I got my studio back, and we are now in the Rocky II moment. So Rocky One is done, and uh, I had the shit beat out of me, but uh, I'm alive, and now I'm a contender. I know you don't know what that means, but I'll show you in a little bit. You see, this video today is sponsored by Stack and Stack. Stack and Stack is a criminal organization masquerading itself as a brokerage firm. And you'll see that just like I have put on federal racketeering cases, this YouTube video will continue to exist. And the best that they can do is ignore me. Because not ignoring me, or let's say that you're not running a criminal operation and your name is Brian Bombs or Don Biasi or Richard Trank or any of these people, you can easily send me a cease and desist, which has validity, with, which then violate my constitutional right of uh, freedom of speech. But the point of all of this is that you can't just go on YouTube and call somebody a criminal without having evidence. Furthermore, it is very important for you to understand that these cases that I have filed over here, I can get into a lot of trouble. So the only thing that people that hate Dan Reese have to do is prove me wrong on these two. And then all of a sudden, you've got me on filing a false claim and all that stuff. But there's one problem with this whole thing. They are all true. And I know it took me a long time because I'm not an attorney, so it took a few years, but I have the third case that I'm about to file. My story is not that different than anybody else's. COVID hit, I was hit very hard with a bunch of lawsuits. My mother, my partner, everybody abandoned me. I was completely left alone. I tried to do the best I can to make a bunch of YouTube videos to tell people the truth, that a guy like me mathematically can't be in the center of this many world-changing events without him cheating. I tried to tell everyone who I am. That was all ignored in favor of running after my money. Um, I am, believe it or not, not a rich man in my opinion, but I am also the richest man in the world. The reason for that is because I have these amazing children. And I love my voice so much, and this video is dedicated to actually my boys and Papa Mitch, uh, who was very, very nice uh, during a difficult time for me and my family. But, you know, there was uh, this pawn shop called Perfect Pawn that you're going to see again one day. And uh, there was a matchbook. And on the matchbook, inside of it, it had a quote from Ralph, Ralph Waldo Emerson. And it said, money often costs too much. You see, I wonder who the marketing department was for that company, Perfect Pawn, because no one's got that matchbook. And I thought, wow, that's brilliant. This is coming from a pawnbroker, the place where people have the most amount of pain associated with their personal lives, and they're still getting their life back together. Hmm. I gotta find out who does the marketing for that company, because I have a few business ideas coming up. But yes, money often costs too much. And the price you pay for money is simply not something that most people can calculate. But luckily for you, I am the number one black mathematician in the world. I'm also number one in the world in game theory. This is not a joke. I have not seen anyone even come close to anything that I've done in the last two years, let alone this channel that most people cannot understand because they're used to a feed or an edited product. So this is the time that we should be turning off right now because you're not interested anymore. But what I'm going to tell you is that my time is limited. I can't just film all day long because I just got my studio back and all of a sudden, boom, monkey wrench is thrown in there. But this is a criminal organization. I am making this video as a warning to the multiple buyers that think that they're going to be owning my personal property as a direct result of criminal activity. This is what's going to happen. Whether or not the closing happens, that's irrelevant. I already had my bankruptcy dismissed and I already got what I needed out of it, which is my freedom. So after my freedom, any man will know that you'll pay to have your left child off. So that's irrelevant. I'm already alive. So that's the biggest mistake you ever make. You should never leave damn least alive. That's, anyone will tell you. Now, Stack and Stack is Brian Baum's, uh, that's it, and uh, Don Biasi's son. Don Biasi was my U.S. trustee. Now, Don Biasi is supposed to be impartial, but believe it or not, the money that he makes to U.S. Street just, U.S. trustee wasn't enough. So him, Richard Frank, Brian Baum's, and his son created a very elaborate scheme to be able to take assets from the federal court system and privatize them through a series of orchestrated maneuvers that Richard Trank does. Now, I was able to catch them all in the cookie jar, and I'm gonna spend the next couple of years really enjoying myself and releasing this evidence because Richard Trank is or was the president of the Bar Association of Essex County. So if you're a lawyer in Essex County, Richard Trank specifically took my case in order to destroy Dan Reese's because Dan Reese's has a better agenda 
I have an agenda. You know what my agenda is? Tell the truth to the world. And uh, lawyers make it impossible. So uh, they've even gone so far as to hurt me and my family. And that's why I'm saying to you that if you're a human being that's about to think that they're about to take title from a criminal organization that is involved, please understand that this video now makes you look something, what's called an accessory. So by virtue of ignoring this video and proceeding, you will ignore that the West Orange sale has lose approximately half a million dollars, which means that you, if you're an unknowing buyer who thinks that they're getting a $1.3 million asset for 800 something thousand, well, I assure you there's a few things you need to know. Number one, the tree house that I have in the backyard, I built that as an art form when my father passed away. That tree house did not come with the property. That tree house will be eliminated and taken with me. That is my art. I didn't put it in bankruptcy because it's priceless. My father built a gymnasium for my, for my brother and I when we were children inside an apartment complex where he took down multiple apartments and combined them. We were one of the only kids in Moscow, Russia, that had an indoor gymnasium. When my father passed away, I was in a lot of pain. So I took that pain out of the treehouse that's in the backyard. I'm a non-violent person, so I create art. I make movies in real life. So I made a movie with that treehouse. And unfortunately, you know. So that's number one, that's West Orange. So if you see this video, very carefully watch this video. And please understand that you're an accessory to a criminal organization. There are, are no human beings that are allowed to be a part of a criminal transaction. There's something called threatening. Legally, uh, Michael Avenetti actually went to prison for threatening Nike. Please understand I'm not threatening anyone. You can either choose to completely ignore me or do a little research for yourself as to the filings that I put into federal court. Furthermore, I want everyone to understand that even though I'm not an attorney, I have successfully <laughs> adjudicated hundreds of cases uh, as pro se as well as pretending to be someone else, which I can't really discuss right now because I'm a free man. And the last thing I want to do is uh, trip up. Now, what I'm saying to you is, I've never broken a law in my life. Every once in a while, I skate around the law, and I need to correct it. I have to see Lowe's in Phillipsburg about something, by the way, which reminds me. But the reality is that no human being is allowed to profit based on the outcome of crime. And this is a criminal organization that's been conducting themselves for over 20 years, and you know, it's gonna take a couple of years to unwind it. So if you think you're gonna comfortably sleep in my home and take half a million dollars uh, plus of equity away from me and my family, Unfortunately, you have another thing coming. The house is $1.3 million. I say so, it's my property, that's the way it works. I don't care what the judge says, I don't care what the new appraisal says, I don't care what this guy says. This is my personal property. <laughs> I don't have to sell it. I am uh, not in a point where I need to desperately sell it. It has more than half a million dollars on top of it. That's a million dollars in equity, right? Pretty simple, right? Okay, now, the second thing I need to say is there's a second building newer property. That will cost you about $20 million. I have spent over 20 years cultivating a brand called Microbank to be able to build, launch, and release on Bank Street so I can go against the modern derivative credit system, which is across the street from me at Prudential, the largest debt holder in the world. So believe it or not, think big for a second, all right? I know you think you're getting another one of my assets for a million dollars less than it's worth. No problem. We'll put all that to the side. Please understand that if you even come close to touching any of my property inside of that, you will be arrested. Fact number two, um, I actually don't mind if the transaction goes through because I learned a lot from something called malpractice. Now, malpractice is a very interesting thing. Most people think it's bad uh, for a lawyer to be sued for malpractice and whatever, but the reality is malpractice is a sham. It is designed to protect lawyers. The reason for this is a special slap on the wrist designed for lawyers to get a special insurance policy so they're fully protected at all times. So no lawyer cares about malpractice. No one, no one cares. Because what you have to do is prove a case within a case, which is really difficult, and very rarely does that actually come out through fruition. So you can delete malpractice completely from your vocabulary. It does not exist in modern America, especially in the world of Richard Trank, uh, which is the, who is the president of the Essex County Bar Association and pretty much controls what all the lawyers in the actual bankruptcy case said and did, which means that my bankruptcy was actually controlled by Richard Trank. Don Biase never showed up to the 40 or so court appearances that we have. He's never shown up to any one of my properties. And the trustee actually never showed up to these properties. What he does is he's old, he's not qualified to be a Chapter 7 trustee. So he simply uses this as a front. So this is called racketeering. This is a racketeering case that I will bring forth in civil court should criminal uh, allegations that I am working with law enforcement not be filed in a timely manner. I will give everyone two years because they've been doing it for 20. So if your name is Brian Bottoms, Richard Trang, Don Biase, or Nicholas Biase, you will surely 100% be charged criminally for your actions against the LM reasons. Now, back to this. 
Racketeering is not dismissible through bankruptcy. That's why it was really important for me to adjudicate all my defense claims. I couldn't just go into suing people the second it happened. I had to very carefully make sure that there was no possible way for anyone to accuse me of frivolously using the court system, which means that I complied the best I could with every motion, with everything you can imagine, up until the point I filed bankruptcy, which is what you're supposed to do. And then after I filed bankruptcy, I realized that I wasn't able to get the services that I filed for, which is also fraudulent, and there's something called the Barton Doctrine. Judge Sherwood, you're the best. And uh, so back to second second, thank you for sponsoring this video. What I wanted to do was show the world. So if you're watching this video, you're probably like, yeah, that's great. So Dan Reese thinks this guy's a criminal, but why have they not been charged? And why is there no evidence? The reason for this will be released on a video that I very carefully took the time to think about. I live in a town called Livingston, New Jersey. We have a very big problem in our town with car thefts and things like that. The reason why it continuously happen is because we are not just soft on crime, we don't prosecute criminals for fear. And if you live in Livingston, New Jersey, you should follow my channel because what I do is I call out people for lying and uh, not doing their job and then putting, being put in a position. So short story long, I had a watch stolen from me and it was theft by deception, which is something you need to look into. I had a girlfriend of mine uh, right before I declared bankruptcy, maybe a year and a half before then. Uh, this human being pretended to want to do a loan for me, but instead he took my property. It took me a year and a half to get my property back and to get him into court, but no charges were actually formally filed except a slap on the wrist, and this is a $150,000 watch. Now, I couldn't understand. I was going crazy. I live in Livingston, New Jersey. It's a great town. I, mean, I couldn't understand what was going on until I met Mr. Berliner, the prosecutor. Now, if you notice, I'm wearing a hat. Forward or backwards, the same thing. That's because my hair looks crazy in this video. And it looks like I'm crazy. And I just wanted to let you know that if you're watching that video and you see that I am very upset or angry, please put yourself in my shoes. Look at the facts. Look at the facts of living in a town your whole life that you've supported. And look at the fact that the prosecutor, the head cop of the town, will support criminal activity because the other person has a private lawyer, and I'm pro se. So if you live in Livingston, New Jersey, you, with Mr. Berliner, as the prosecutor, have absolutely no chance of feeling safe in your own house. Please use me as an example, and just like Frank White says, you're welcome, you're all welcome. I love movies, and I'm not violent, but you're welcome. Livingston, New Jersey, you're welcome. I found out a big problem for why we have continuous theft, and uh, because car thieves and any other people that choose to steal from the Livingston Mall and within my own eyes and watch the prosecutor do absolutely nothing for the continuous amounts of criminals that continue to come here. Please remember I'm a human being who is all pro bail reform as well as I have been to multiple prisons. I believe in the justice system, which means that there is no justice if you have absolutely zero ramifications for your crimes. I don't mind, even like let's say somebody proves that this is wrong and I have to do six months in federal jail, great, you proved it. But there's one problem with this. You would have to be like Richard Trank and these guys that make up a story. And you can't do that in federal court. And that's why Richard Trank is so scared right now. And that's why he's doing everything he can. And believe it or not, I filed for voluntary bankruptcy. And if you're an attorney who finds something really funny, Richard, Richard Trank is so scared of me that he filed a motion to put me back into bankruptcy <laughs> involuntarily, even though there's no legal precedent whatsoever. But he's so scared. He's so scared. And he's so scared of the truth. But the truth is going to come out. See, Mr. Berliner knows Richard Trent very well. And Mr. Berliner already had a preset disposition for Daniel and Reese. And so I had no chance whatsoever. So please understand that if you live in Livingston, New Jersey, my name is Dan Reese. And my personality prevents me from having any proper legal protection. That's right. You might think that's crazy. But if you live in Livingston, New Jersey, you'll understand this very well. Because in Livingston, New Jersey, your personality is far more important than your character. How you say, how are you? Good to see you. Being nice, that's a lot more important than standing up to bullies because standing up to bullies is really, really hard. I went to Livingston High School. There's a really awesome um, juvenile detective named Mark Detour. If Mark Detour ever has the ability, I'd love to get him up here and talk about bullying, especially because this is my bully. Him and Alex had two kids, actually, and his father, uh, his brother became a cop. Alex is, and I think Jose and Jesus, who is a very nice guy. It has nothing to do with childhood drama. I love the Livingston Police Department. And what I want to do is make everyone in Livingston respect the police department. You can't respect the police department with a prosecutor like this. 
There's no police officer that can do their job, guys. If the prosecutor's gonna get everybody off the hook, there's no motivation, there's nothing whatsoever. This is, there's not, this is a, my person that like committed the crime against me is a multi-millionaire who launders money. So this is not like, like some mother of four trying to steal groceries on Route 10. There's a big difference between the two of them. And if you're someone who's stealing groceries, you, honestly, you should not in, be put in jail. You should be provided with civil services that Essex County has, which is designed for human beings who get to a point of desolation that they have to steal their food. I mean, you know, like, I've never pulled unemployment for once in my life. I've paid taxes in my entire life. I do this so people who need food do not have to steal food. I don't do this so Mr. Berliner can flex his nuts and let criminals run away with hundreds of thousands of dollars of assets and act like nothing is wrong. Now, there is something wrong, and that's why I waited until I got some uh, authenticity back regarding what exactly transpired. So the last thing I wanted to do was embarrass myself by putting up a video that's not true, but unfortunately, everything you're about to see is 100% truth. The whole truth is nothing but the truth. My name is Daniel Ambrisis. I am a human being, believe it or not. I've never lied one time on YouTube. I've made certain mistakes due to the amount of pressure I've been put under by friends and family and people who have pretended to support me who actually in secret go against me. And all this is proven in one of these cases. The other case is just to show you how people like myself are used by people who have more money than me. I was raised poor, I grew up poor, I'm a self-made man. I know most people in my town have no idea what that is. Me making that statement and saying that I'm different than other people will offend the people that are not self-made, but I am. I'm very different. When you're self-made, you know you could do it a hundred times over. And I'm not even gonna get started on vlog 13. I have this amazing barbecue business and I know everybody wants me to make money, but like, I'm back, okay? I'm back, I got some really important stuff to do right here. Unfortunately, I gotta run, because my mind is somewhere else, so I wanna make this video short. But I have to get this out because I wanted to let everybody that's about to think that they're about to get two of my 19 buildings, I will have 17 left, it's okay. Believe it or not, I'm a very lucky man. I have two beautiful boys and a beautiful wife, and what else would you want after that? Now, regarding the money part of it, I got it. I've been doing this since I was eight years old. You have nothing to worry about. You'll see lots of money, and wow, I have a little brain, okay? This is more important. Stopping suicide is really important. That's not a money thing. Oof, we gotta get the AC back up and running here. It's good to have power, it's good to be back. I apologize if I was very quick. This message was a legal, civil warning for everyone to pump their brakes and give me a chance to present my appeals to the federal court regarding the decisions made upon the dismissal of my bankruptcy. My name is Dan Reeses. I do not lie. I know some of the things that I say are very, very disturbing. I want to remind everyone <coughs> that this is a voluntary... <coughs> Who's Bob at saying that? Because the truth is, if you watch my videos and you're offended, you're a sadomasochist. You're voluntarily watching things that hurt themselves, yourself. Like Adam Kessler. Like Adam Kessler, if you watch this video and you hear me say that your wife loves to wear headbands because she just wears a hairline, just like her and her father, then okay, fine, your wife is bald. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a Friends episode where um, uh, Christine Taylor, dodgeball, I'm making it, and Phil's where Christine Taylor shaves her head. There's a plenty of beautiful bald women. There's nothing wrong with being bald. Larry David goes into why being bald is not bad. So if you're Adam Kessler and you choose to watch this video and you realize that your wife and all that, you know, it's a receding hairline. It's not a big deal. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, not everyone has the kind of hair that my wife has. You can't just like, you can't have grace. You can't make grace. It's a Seinfeld episode. Anyways, Ashley's a very pretty girl. You know, but there's nothing wrong with her whatsoever. And um, see, like, I have a uh, real speak. I mean, are you going to make fun of me? No, of course not. That's the whole point. That's why people who are saying nasty things about Ashley Kessler and her hairline and how her headband smell because she wears the same ones every day, they're mean people. They're not nice people. Ashley, you should not be friends with these people because these are the things that are going around town and that is not cool. You don't deserve it. You're a mother and no one deserves this. No one. So, but Adam Kessler, you, uh, you will see what your actions have done to me and my family in a federal lawsuit that will come eventually when I have time. And my name is Dan Pieces, and I really don't like bullies. I don't like bullies, and you know what I don't like even more? Secret bullies. The ones that hide in the shadows. And we're about to pull them out, one by one. So the first one we're going to pull out is going to be Prosecutor Berliner. And you're going to see exactly what happens in Louisville, New Jersey, when you're a victim of an actual crime of how little 
the municipal courts or the prosecutor in particular, Mr. Berliner, gives a shit about you as a victim. Peace.